And welcome to France, about 150 kilometers northwest of Paris at the market town of Bernay. There's thunder and lightning in the air as well as a couple of thousand umbrellas. And we hope that the Saturday evening program will not be interrupted by rain, which I'm afraid has been forecast. But the rain has not dampened the enthusiasm of the very large crowd who've been attracted to this first of the six rounds in the 1997 Euro Cup for minis, modifieds and superstocks. That's the French sledge or weight transfer machine moving into place. The teams have to pull that sledge down the 100 metre track and a weight box makes it harder and harder to pull. It moves from the back of the sledge to the front. And the winner, of course, is the one with the furthest distance. The first class today she's getting ready to film is the 3.4 tonne super stocks. And first to pull is Deer Hunter from Holland, driven today by Carol Vermeeren, who does the honours when the owner, Wim Janssen, can't get away from Holland. An earlier heavy rain shower left the track very wet, and you need to know what you're doing to get the best results. Too many revs and the wheels will spin and get no friction at all. But Carol's going well. He was third here last year, but it remains to be seen whether 74.91 is enough to get the points that are interesting. That's Emile, the regular French master of ceremonies, talking to the crowd, which even the promoters admit is exceptional tonight. But I'm sure that they'd all love to see this Deutz do well. It's one of two French entries in this event. Outsider with René Camille. He comes from near here, Beaumestil. He's had cylinder head and turbo problems and he hopes he's solved them, giving it all he's got. He's looking down, it's clearly not enough. And he is well short of Deer Hunter, 58.54 for Outsider. And ready shrugs. And back to the workshops for him. Hans Schweiger from Munich sitting high in the saddle of Rowdy, which many have tipped to do well this year after disappointment in 1996. He's raided the piggy bank and spent quite a few marks upgrading his international 1086. Oh, it really gets hard at the 70 meter mark. 74.91 to beat Deer Hunter. Yes, into the lead, 77.77 for the tractor dealer from Bavaria. Now from Denmark, Niels Damgor and Blue Power. You can see the white hoist in the background there. Jean-Claude, our cameraman's up there. We told him there was 500 francs in the bottom of the lift box. And when he found out there wasn't, he was already 50 meters in the air. But fortunately, he's not afraid of heights. You can see the weight box steadily moving down the sledge and stopping blue power at about 70 meters 67.39 for Niels Damgore who adjusted the water injection and gave it too much I think only taking part in this event because the lorry he's borrowed has to be back in Denmark Sunday evening so he can't take part in tomorrow's 4.4 contest no travel problems for Robert Sonnen. He lives just down the road at St. Clair de Arcy. So he'll be sleeping in his own bed tonight. Easter, that's the name of a rapeseed oil firm. It's a K7250. And that's another, stopping at about 70 meters. 71.91 for Deester and Robert Sonnen. His wife Rose has just handed over the reins of the secretary's job. That's at the French Pulling Association. It's after a long time in the post. First flagman Willem Tamming from Holland, giving a friendly push to this John Deere from Germany, which Thomas Kaiser manages to stall there. This is his second year with the Phantom, which he bought from Kenneth Barenko in America, where it had the friendly name of Second Mortgage. He's had a new paint job on the side, and he's looking to do well, because his wife Margaret is next to pull, and if he doesn't beat her, she won't let him forget it for a while. Oh, 
Oh, they really have set this sledge tight tonight. Another one not making more than the 70s. 72.90 for Thomas from Gussenstadt. And that means third place at the moment with seven more to pull. Now, here's his wife, Margaret, with the white snake, which Thomas used to drive before he got the Phantom. There's our eye in the sky. He's hoping it doesn't rain because he's left his coat in the car. This is a good run for Margaret. Oh, she brought it back on course there. And she must be very close to Thomas. 71.11, so 1.8 meters less than her husband. And peace at the breakfast table for a while. Well, Margaret looks pleased with her efforts. 34 years old and one of the few women drivers in the sport. Now another German contender, Hans-Peter Stratmann from Dusseldorf with Little Red and Bad Rooster. It's one of the smallest engines in the competition. He and his brother Martin always trying to make improvements, but having a lot of disappointments along the way. Belching flames as Hans-Peter builds up the rev and then lets the rooster loose. the bad side of the bird. Problems again. 26.67 for the Strapmans. And back to the drawing board, which must be quite big by now. Now from Holland, Jan Bograf and Demolition Deer. Fourth in this class up at the Europeans in Jarve in Finland. He's doing a lot of braking on the back wheels to stay on course. That's lost in speed and distance. Rowdy has to lead with 77.77. 76.26, so Demo Deer goes into second place with four more to pull. That was Willem Tamming beckoning back last year's runner-up Red Alert from Great Britain with Peter Clark. Peter won three out of six Euro Cups in 96, but then went out of bounds at the final event in Meerkirk, and that probably cost him the overall title. He's not too pleased with the track, which doesn't really suit Red Alert. We just have to see how he shapes up. There he goes. A good start, but a little unbalanced. Difficult to hold the throttle down when you're bouncing around like a yo-yo. And the wheels spinning loose at the end and then steaming like a thoroughbred racehorse after a race. Let's see it again in slow motion. Hopping and bopping around. Fighting for every meter on the track. 81.06, Red Alert takes the lead, but his mechanic seems unhappy. They just spent $30,000 on an overhaul, and maybe Peter's got to put his hand in his pocket again. Well, he has the lead. But for how long? That was Mag Cal Bits and Pieces really rushing in to do battle. He won the Euro Cup for the last three years. And he's not going to relinquish the title without a fight. Willem Meldhausen, the owner, is back home in Holland. And it's Leonard Griffin who's doing the honours today. This is Leonard's favourite class. Oh, and he's making light of the conditions. Look at him fly. Oh, yes, he is over for a full pull. And mechanic Edwin Dirksen punching the air. So the lead changes hands yet again. Really graceful in slow motion. problems at all, full pull to Magcal bits and pieces. And if Peter Clark thought that winning the Euro Cup would be easy this year, I think he needs to think again. Now just two more to pull. This is the 4.4 ton European champion, Chris Duran and Mega Power. Since he won the title in Yerva, he's had no end of problems, most coming from the water injection system. Oh, 
Christo runs out of steam, hardly over the halfway line. 41.18 for the 37-year-old from Vassar. Now the last to pull, Pekka Hurlaby and Sigma Power. Used to be Delta Power, but it's just had a name change. Won the European title in Yerva as well. So a match for anyone on his day. Having to correct. And it's not going to be his day. Well short of the leader. And the way he stopped very suddenly would seem to indicate he's got problems. 76.68 puts Pekka into fourth place overall as we see the official result. And Leonard can be well pleased with bits and pieces. He'll be a tough nut to crack in this year's competition. But there's a long way to go yet. Now let's check out the other two main classes who've been running under lights here at Bonnet. This is the 3.4s and see what happened to Terminator. Going nowhere fast and digging down to China. Shutting off. The tough just couldn't get going. Spinning the wheels really so fast in the slippery conditions he had to shut down or melt down. The Fox team presented a new tractor and a new driver, 23-year-old Fleming Smith. And he had no difficulty getting away and finding grip where others were just slipping and sliding in the light rain. And he set a pull-off distance of 81.52. Really dramatic in slow motion. Fighting every inch of the way with the sledge. And that pull gave him the lead. That was the turn of Ashley Middleton and Black Gold. Usually more at home in the lighty 2.4 tonners. But on this occasion, Keeping some of the better names out of the top three. His distance, 57.90. Last to pull. Brian Armistead and Desperate Dan. But the European champion for the last six years had problems with the front supercharger when it jammed. That sheared all the teeth off the driving belt. So he was down on power. Also on distance, 12 metres short of Fox, who ran out an easy winner. And it's time for us to move on now to the final class of the evening, the real heavyweights, the 5.4 tonne modifieds. That's Peter Direct inspecting the track. He needs to know what it's like to set up his tractor, where to position the weights, that sort of thing. There are only five tractors taking part, three from France, one from Germany and one from Holland. And the first is the 1996 European champion, Green Fighter. It was Heinz Josef Forskamp that steered it to victory in Yerva. And here it's Enrico Voloton who's in the driving seat. He often sits in on events outside of Germany. Bonnet is no exception. Sometimes they drive this class with four Allisons, but tonight it's only three, and it's still good enough for a full pull. But the mechanic is looking rather intently at one of the engines. He could have problems. We'll just have to wait and see. Now it's on to the first of the French competitors. Double Nord, driven by Christophe Hugh from Bach. 14 cylinders, an Atlas Nord star motor, but they haven't done the business tonight. Only 12.15 meters for double Nord. And this is Hercule, which is driven by Thierry Thibault, who's a Lucas mechanic. Hercule is powered by a Wartzilla diesel, but this is almost in slow motion, isn't it? Hercule coming to rest at just over 50 metres, 53.58 for Thierry Thibault. Both Hercule and Double Nord failed to make the pull-off and Green Fighter had to retire with mechanical problems, so the pull-off was between Green Spirit and this one here, Oregon 2. It's driven by Christophe Lorne, he's a local favourite. Let's just look and see what his distance was. Well short of the 100 metre mark. Yeah, 
in fact he was well short of the 90 metre mark only 83.68 for Oregon 2 Christoph looking up to the stage where his girlfriend Carol Ebert is standing they're getting married soon and I'm sure that they'll have quite a party to celebrate so now Green Spirit 4 Peter Direct Peter went the most direct way straight down the middle no messing about, arms up in a victory salute, a second full pull to the Dutchman. Let's see it from the other camera. Oh, powerful pull, first place to Peter. And the yellow spirits are over the moon. And they'll have a great time tonight as well, I'm sure. And then it was time for the traditional end to the first day's proceedings. A mammoth firework display. We'll take a break. Day two follows after this. Welcome back to Bonnet in France. And you may like to know that it's here that the hats for most of the French armed forces are made, together with those for the police and the gendarmerie. It really is handcraft at its best. Each one is embroidered, assembled and sewn, and finished by hand. And that is what SOFAC stands for. And they also supply most other French-speaking countries. In a different area of the same building, this lovely lady works in the company of those two bodyguards. And it's bodyguards that the company A2CM specializes in, when the police or armed forces need body protection. Well, then they come here. Everything is cut and sewn and finished by hand. And there's the finished product. Now, from two of Bernays thriving industries, we go to Tech Corner and Michel Coy. Hi. I am Michel Coy from Tech Corner. Today's Tech Corner is also about safety and driver's protection. We always see these nice suits drivers wear. Of course they look nice, that's part of the show. The pulling sport may look as a safe form of motorsport, and yes it is, thanks to a set of very good safety rules. After protecting the audience, the most important thing is to protect the driver. The suits they wear are special fire suits made of Nomex PBI Kevlar or Proven Cotton, which is a chemical treated cotton. These materials are tested in purpose built laboratories and they come with a special patch which proves to our scrutineers how old the suit is and which grade of fire resistance the suit has. It's not only the fire suit which protects the driver, he or she also must wear shoes or leather boots, socks, gloves a head sock and a good helmet with closed visor. Nomex underwear is highly recommended. The reason for this all is look at the following pictures. This was Michel Coy, Tech Corner. Thanks Michel. Now back to Bernay, another good crowd for day two. <laughs> and the first round of the Euro Cup. We'll be following the minis and the modifieds and some of the other classes today. And spare a thought for the crane driver. <laughs> no, don't take a dive. He went up to reposition for our cameraman and one of the springs went boing. And he's got stuck and can't get down. Oh dear. Now we begin with the minis. And here's the first, Mr. Rabbit from Germany. Behind the wheel, Jürgen Weibel who's a farmer from near Stuttgart. That was Manfred Zimmermann, who's lending a hand as a mechanic today. And time for a quick snack, French style, before Mr. Rabbit hops on his way. Jürgen has a Chrysler 440, which gives about 1,200 horsepower. No, he was just a few meters short of a full pull, 94.81 for Mr. Rabbit. And he is the Iron Maniac, I kid you not his name. Now we go over to the 1995 Euro Cup holder, Carl Sofersengen and Mini Breaker. Had a wretched season in 96, 
but he's making up for it today. What a fine full pull that was. And there goes the Iron Maniac. He helps with the sledge. Look at this, Carl Sofus firing on all cylinders and making a full pull look so, so easy. But he wasn't the only one. Let's see now a complete list of the full pulls. Two from Holland, three from Germany and one from Norway. And unfortunately, it looks like it's umbrella time again. Or a chair on the head, if that's the only shelter you have. But our man up the lift is still there, colder, wetter, and still waiting for the fire brigade. Yeah, it's been a long time, hasn't it? Covers coming on. And then the fire brigade arrived. But guess what? Their ladder wasn't big enough. So they had to think of another way of rescuing our hero up there. And that's uh, Barry Ashcroft of the Red Alert crew squelching his way through the very muddy pit area. But the crowd seem to be enjoying it as we get on with the pull-off. And first away is Ghostbuster 1 with Eugen Schwartz. It's a Meteor tank engine which has served the Schwartz family well. Oh, it's a good job he's got a helmet with a sealed visor. Otherwise the dust will get everywhere. Eugen looking round and I can tell him that the distance was 86.08. And now he'll have to wait for the other five runs to find out if it was good enough to take top honors. Beneath the yellow and red helmet is young Vin Dingering, who's driving both Lambarda 2 and Lambarda 4 today. That's because big brother Gert is taking examinations at the technical school at Appledorn in Holland. He can't spare the time. Well, Vim was dangerously close to disqualification, but just managed to keep it in. 80.68 for Lambarda 2. And it would seem that help is on its way for our friend, who's now thinking that there must be a lot better ways to spend a Sunday. The girl with the green hat looking down the course is Thomas Zimmerman's sister Marina, who's come along to support her brother. And by a strange coincidence, who is the next to pull? It's Thomas. He's an industrial mechanic from Ettlenscheiss in Germany. He won the European Championships back in 1992 and was second in 93 and again last year. Oh, and that was not far away from a full pull. 98.08 is the distance for Joker as we see his run again in slow motion. You can see the chequered flag, but he knows it's out of reach. Now, how do they get down from there? On to the next contestants. Lambarda 4. The whole Dingering family is involved with the team. Father usually drives Lambarda 3. But Lambarda 4 is the oldest son Gert's Mini, and it's Vim again behind the wheel. In five out of six events last year, it made the top three. Really working the brakes, trying to steer back on course, and he's quite a long way down to the Joker. 88.82 for Lambarda 4. Michael Fleissig of the Tekken Safety Board with the right footwear, and so is Soran the Flagman. And this is Ghostbuster 2 winding itself up. Here's their mechanic who's called Atzi, and he told me the colour of his hair is not lilac, but plum, as in banana. I always thought the bananas were yellow, but probably he just meant it was a fruit. Anyway, he's down at the end of the track. Here comes the European champion, Ghostbuster 2, Helmut Schwartz at the wheel. 98.08 to beat Joker, and he goes past that, doesn't he? Well, well, well. Look at him. Bouncing around. Last time we saw him was at Ahoy when he burst a back wheel. But no disasters today. Steve. 
steaming past the marker from the Joker at a great rate of knots and he keeps going and going and going for a second full pull. It's a floating finish line which means that they count up to 110 meters and Helmut has made 106.24 and he'll be happy with that. It'll be hard to beat. And the lift man is also happy. He's about to get both feet back on the ground again. He should complain really, he's had a grandstand view of the whole event. Right now, the last to pull. Carl Sopersengen and Mini Breaker. Can his Keith Black engine beat the Isotop turbine? We'll soon know. Oh, he's beginning to slow. And the answer is no. Carl Sofus has, has to content himself with second place behind the German. His distance has been given as 103.36, as we see from the official result. So second place to Mini Breaker, two Germans in the top three, and the Dutch a little bit further down. And as the lift man touches down, we lift off for a short break. We'll be back with more action after this. Time now to check out a couple of other classes here at Bonnet in France, starting with the pickups or two-wheel drives. The French have slightly different rules. It'll be interesting to compare them with their Dutch guests. We start with Lucifer and Stefan Bono. He has a very special Citroen that seems to want to drive completely out of the track. <laughs> what bad luck, Stefan. That won't win any prizes. In fact, it means automatic disqualification. So that wasn't a good start for the French. The crowd a lot thinner than on Saturday evening, but enjoying the chance to see all the foreign tractors. Now, this is Samurai, which uses a Rover V12 engine. The remaining venues in the Euro Cup are in Germany, Sweden, Holland, Denmark, and France again. It's just over the border from Switzerland, who are the official hosts, but it's being held in France. Samurai off and running, but not too fast. Finding it really hard going out there. And he clonks down at the end there. 76.75 for Samurai. Two uh, new trucks in the class this year, and here's the first of them. It's called Tom Dean driven by Francis Renatel from Niort. It's got a V12 char which is behind the driver and very similar to No Limit, the Dutch machine who we'll be seeing later. And that was a reasonable run from Francis. 81.15 is on the scoreboard if you've got X-ray eyes. And now on to a sort of sledgehammer lookalike. This is Excalibur, driven by one of the Hugh family. That's Pascal, who's an electrician. Excalibur is powered by a Rover V12, which used to be found in a tank. Oh, Pascal really working with the wheel. Keeping it down the centre. But he is well short of Tom Dean. As the sun gets stronger, the scoreboard becomes a waste of time. 65.64 for Excalibur and Pascal Hugh. This is the last of the French pickups, another Newey. It's called Dow Claris, and it's driven by Michel Lebrac, who comes from about 50 kilometers from Bernay. A single Allison engine, and he's showing a lot of promise. Works for an electric company. Good drive that, 71.74 for Michelle. Now is she falling asleep or is she bored? But Michelle will soon wake her up. This is the first of the Dutch trio, the Dutch champion, Miss Liberty and Michelle Coy. Oh, he's got his weights wrong. And this is a wild ride. Michel did really well to go so close to a full pull. Let's see it again in slow motion. Reaching for the sky. And in that position, sky is just about all Michel Coy can see. The whole chassis starting to shake. And 
That was a pull for his memory box. The distance was 98.71. Two more to pull. The Dutch two-wheel drive class, very high-tech these days, and it would be a big surprise if they didn't beat the French, who are very underpowered by comparison. No Limit, driven by Gerald Jonkman, who comes from near Rotterdam. It's his second year in competition, and with that, Gerard goes into second place with a distance of 80.95. Now the last to pull. Lane ran stream with Cloud9. A winner at Ahoy last time out. The chassis, a copy of the American Bad Badger. Better weight distribution than Miss Liberty. More forward speed. This could well be a full pull. Oh, it's close. But yes, he did creep over for a full pull, and he wins this challenge class. So, as expected, the Dutch won two and three. Here's the winning run again in slow motion. After the first bounce, almost hovering in midair. A fine run from Cloud9. Here's the official result. Cloud9, the only one with a double full pull. So Cloud9 on Cloud9 as we turn our attention to another class, the 2.4 ton modifieds. And this was Lee Rebel's first run. All over the track. The driver really glad for his safety belt as he's rocked and rolled nearly out of the saddle. But then it was Michel Tuart, the experienced driver, who took over for the second run. Cranking up his Allison V12, and now on his way. Dancing around a bit, but under control. And that's the way to do it. A full ball for the Frenchman. He joins three others in the final where Great Britain, Holland and Germany are also represented. This is the first to go, Ashley Middleton and Black Gold. Third in yesterday's 3.4s, must be favoured in this field. Getting a good start speed and keeping a straight line. And that was a good pull from Ashley. His distance, 83.52. Now this is a Newey. Green Spirit V was built during the winter by Peter Direct and his lads. It's got a single Rolls-Royce Griffin engine and it's driven by 28-year-old Danny Decker. Danny works in the Direct family firm and drive tractors and such like. It'll be interesting to see exactly what he can do. That's it, get yourself into position. And have a coke and a smile. Danny, taking it calmly. I wanted to make any mistakes. But then no great distance either. 58.19 for Danny Decker and Green Spirit the fifth. Lira Bell is unable to come to the start, so now it's all up to Green Monster to see if he can deny black gold victory. It was built by 16 to 21 year olds last year and is the uh, junior green fighter team with the World Court at that. Heinz Joseph Force Cap Sun behind the wheel. The distance that Tobias has to beat is 83.52. And he's finding it difficult. And that's only about 60 meters for Green Monster. Here it is again in slow motion. He found it difficult to get grip at the start and was quite slowly away. And then he had to pay the price later on. 61.48 and that gives him second place. Ashley getting flowers from Catherine Bofils and champers from Vanessa. Don't forget to give her a kiss. And one for luck. <laughs> there you go. And here's the official result. Black Gold, the clear and convincing winner, and Green Spirit the fifth, no doubt pleased to take third place. 
And then they shared the victory wagon with the two wheeler boys and getting the well deserved applause from the crowd. Actually enjoying every minute of it. Right, now we move on to the final class which was the 4.4 ton super stocks. No one leaving the arena before the final act is played out. And to get us on our way, it's Carol Vermeeren and Deer Hunter. Carol remember sixth in yesterday's Euro Cup, but many of the top names have gone home with mechanical problems, so he could well end up by improving that today. Oh, he's really flying. And look at this, steaming over for a fine full pull. Well, what a way to start. That really was a tremendous pull. Seeing it again in slow motion. Carol getting the balance just about right. Keeping his hand hard on the throttle. And the girls protecting themselves from the dust. Now from Germany, this is Hans Schweiger and Rowdy. By coming third yesterday, he gets automatically invited to the next Euro Cup rounds. And a win bonus in this class wouldn't be bad either. A full pull is what is needed. It's going well, good speed. Oh, I spoke too soon. He looks down and says, oh, what bad luck, or something like that. Steam and smoke, still evident there. Here's the Big Bang. Wow, what an explosion there. And that will mean another trip to the bank manager. 97.44 gives him second place. And he's just concentrating on putting out the flames. Probably a cylinder or a piston, but definitely bad luck for the German. Now here's another German, Margaret Kaiser and White Snake. She was not lucky in her first run. This is what happened. First she went to the left. She tried to correct, steers heavily on the wheels. Careers crazily back across the track. Out of bounds and disqualified. Can she do better now? now? Break with your left. Break with your left. Too late. And she shakes her head. Went a bit too quick, I think. But she did manage to get a score. 68.62 meters, so she's third at the moment. She avoided going out of bounds. And this is the only Valmet running today. Sigma Power with Pekka Herlevy. He had turbo problems, but worked last night to try and solve them. Oh, something's gone again. He grinds to a halt at a distance of 80.93. And that places him third at the moment behind Rowdy and Running Deer, who has the only full pull. And that is beginning to look like a victory run, if you ask me. Just two more to pull. Here's the first, Thomas Kaiser and Screaming Phantom. Seventh yesterday, but now he has the chance of glory. No, a Phantom is not quite up to it. Well short of a full pull. And I think he has other problems as well. He looks down. Yes, he's missing something. The answer is weights. Emil has found them, three of them, by the looks of it down there. So Thomas is disqualified. He loses weights on the track. And that leaves just one left to pull. Jan Bergra and Demolition Deer. Oh dear. And shaking his head. Something's broken. It's not his day. But it is Carol Vermeerens. His full pull with Deer Hunter was a real winner. And both Hans Schweiger and Pekka Herlevy have some serious workshop time ahead of them. But they do have the consolation of second and third places and a kiss from Vanessa. So the final prize giving in the final event, a 
and we'd like to leave you now with the address to write to for further information on tractor pulling. Or of course if you prefer to surf there, you can always access the page on internet. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the programme, and this is Roger England saying bye from Bernay.